Hello beloveds, this is Steph Parasha, Divine Light, coming up to you from New Zealand, Aotearoa, on this sacred day of Good Friday. Uh, around this time of the year, I like to do a bit of a longer video, and I've just been meditating and sitting and writing and channeling so that I can bring you this Easter time message. Uh, it's the 2nd of April here in New Zealand. Our, I know that our dates are different. Uh, anyway, I'm going to get into it. I'm going to tell you about a little bit about what's been going on with me this last week and how that's going to lead into a general message for us all. A little bit about my twin flame and a specialised channeled message from Jesus Christ. So yeah, okay, we're going to, I'm just going to talk about this last week. I don't know about you guys, but for me, it's been super, super intense uh, this week with the full moon. Um, there's been a lot of purging of emotions. It's just been really frenetic. The energy, it's been very busy. There's been a really a lot of anxiety going around in the energy field. Um, not quite sure exactly where that's coming from. Um, my body always responds in a way that I find it really hard to sleep and I get sort of shakes, I get a shaky as I'm going to sleep my whole body just starts shaking and um, that happens from time to time. I, the other night I was, I'd had about three nights of kind of not really sleeping and I've had, my work's been really really busy so I was just Getting, and I was very anxious and, and there was a storm and it was uh, um, lightning and thunder and so I took a, um, a wee sleeping tablet, um, a relaxant and so that I could get to sleep and usually they knock me out, for, you know I'm just completely gone um, and I don't wake up till 6 o'clock in the morning which is when I get up and anyway I guess I did fall asleep and then I, I woke up and I looked at the time, looked at the clock, it was 2.22 two, two. And I thought, oh no, here we go again. First of all, after I've had a sleeping pill, I normally get completely knocked out. I had taken that pill at about 10.30, 11, so that I could get a good night's sleep. So usually at 2 in the morning, I would probably sleep at least until 4 or 5 in the morning. So why am I awake at 2.22? So I knew something was going on. I was like, hey guys, what is happening? And they've just been telling me all week that we are going through a massive big shift at the moment um, with humanity. There's been a huge shift with belief systems coming crashing down. We're getting a massive shake up. Um, I described this a little bit in my last video around how I perceive it to be a polar shift, um, like a reversal um, of the polar energies. So everything's just getting kind of tipped on its head upside down and shaken all around really. Um, where a lot of people are really in between as we kind of deciding as the pendulum also swings from one way to the other, what do we believe in? Every All of our beliefs are getting questioned and, and looked at and we're wondering, is that real? You know, what, what should I believe in? Um, so this is a really unusual time for many of us as we kind of have to find our footing again in this new energy like this is what's happening guys like also what about the uh, volcano as well in Iceland like again come on why is there a volcano going off in Iceland this massive fire and lava across I guess the ice like is that what Iceland is made of so to me that also represents the massive polarity between ice and fire like two things going off together at the same time like the polar opposites right so we've got to see, we've got to wake up, we've got to see what's going on around us. We've had this um, deluge of these natural kind of disasters, I guess, and, and floods and fires and earthquakes and storms and explosions and um, pandemics and, you know, um, protesting and fighting and division and volcanoes and, you know, it's, it's just, yeah, I mean... I'm saying all of this and I'm not saying this to create fear. That is definitely not what I'm trying to do. However, I do want to make us aware that we are shifting and changing and moving and there is a lot going on. And so in amongst all of this, uh, I was wanting to kind of find out how do we navigate our way through this time. So 
this is something where I'm being told a lot of people will, will show you something, they'll maybe behave in a certain way. However, you might feel that they're maybe not being authentic or they're just saying the right words, but you're not picking up that that is really what's happening. And we're starting to see more and more now what is real and what is fake in terms of how people are behaving. People can smile and shine and say what they, you know, like I said, they'll they'll show you their big smile, but underneath it they could be feeling something that's different. Now, I don't know about you, but as an empath, I've always been able to feel people's feelings. That's why growing up I found it very difficult and confusing being around, like, for example, my parents' friends that, and different family members that would come around and I could always feel the energy but and then they'd say something but it didn't match what they were actually feeling and and that's why I I've, life is confusing for me and was confusing for me growing up but now I understand that what I was feeling was the energy I was getting the energy read on that person and that is actually who they really are and we're starting to see now the energy read of the person we're seeing it more clearly we're becoming more adept and attuned energetically to pick up on the feeling and the vibe of that person and trust that over what they may be presenting to us so um, I'm also getting flexibility at the moment is really important um, flexibility I say that because I was doing a bit of yoga this morning and I noticed my my bones were very my hip joints were quite tight and it was quite uncomfortable sitting in that kind of semi lotus position and uh I thought I was thinking you know oh, why am I feeling inflexible and I feel like you know it's because there is a lot of change and a lot of us that like things to kind of be stay quite <laughs> as comfortable as we can find it a little painful when things are moving and changing around us and it can be uncomfortable so um you know try to go with it bend bend with and flow with what is happening um now I'll come back to the bit about twin flames oh yeah okay so where I want to go to around I'm going to talk sp generally about twin flames as a collective and then I will talk specifically about my own twin flame situation at the moment so I was asking again what what have we got for twin flames at the moment what what is relevant to us so I'm reminded again at this time and this time of the year, this holy time of Easter at time and uh, a lot of people um, who are religious, have Christian beliefs, will really have a lot of, um, there's certain things that are done around this time and there are certain ways that um, at the, this time is acknowledged and I guess you could say celebrated um, and I guess also often we have a little conflict between, at times, the commercial side of what happens with Easter Bunny and chocolates and things like that, and maybe the true meaning can get forgotten. And what we, you know, I often at this time of the year, strangely, will, everyone's wanting chocolate and Easter eggs, and all I really feel my body wants to do is detox. It's just wanting to get back to having soups and uh, juices and beetroot and because it's autumn here in New Zealand we're going into um, in the southern hemisphere into autumn so there's kind of like the sense of needing to have a detox and drink beetroot ginger and carrot and apple juice and things like that so yeah um, and so I was reminded uh, I have done a video on this before some time ago as part of the twin flame journey to remember you know at times often we can get focused on our twin flame, our twin flame, our twin flame, you know, what's that person, that particular person that we have assigned the energy of in our lives or we feel the energy of as our twin flame. So we can get often quite hung up on that particular person and what this we forget is that this is a three-way relationship and not in the way that you may think automatically in a way that this is a the three-way relationship is God, Spirit, Source, who is actually, we, we cannot forget that that relationship is actually what overrides and oversees the twin flame union, the twin flame connection. The twin flame connections are spiritual connections and we would not do this twin flame journey, we would not be, be do the spiritual work 
many of us without this twin flame aspect or section of our spiritual journey we wouldn't we need it to guide us because we uh, love is important to us we would like to have a connection a companionship with another human in a, in a beautiful way that is very attractive to us so you know the human soul will and the human heart will go in that direction and and god god or spirit or source whoever you want to say the divine energy will say yes but this connection needs to be a beautiful spiritual connection a soul connection a connection of pure love and of divinity so that is just a reminder i know at this time this is just what's coming through and i found this energy really beautiful and so again we need to learn um, to detach our ideas of this twin flame relationship being a regular human um, relationship of you know you could say husband and wife I mean I know twin flames are husband and wife and that can happen but if we get too caught up in the mundane aspect of that everyday relationship which I know is also important I get that however if we get the, the purpose of our union is the energetic, spiritual, spiritually energetic part of the heart connection, the soul connection, and that is the energy of the twin flame that we're really energizing and bringing. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to keep going. I've written a few notes here. What have I said there? Yeah, so the, the energy of God, source, coming together in two human beings is also what that's about the connection of what happens when two god source beings come together that is the twin flame union he's i'm sort of getting the message this is where i started to feel like i was channeling as i was writing and i felt the energy of i've had come in this morning jesus and also St. Paul, which is I found really interesting. I had to look that up in Wikipedia to find out actually who he was. So I got the energy here of that you can have relationships of a nature of a similar to, to a twin flame with your soul, anyone in your soul group. So, and it's good to have those relationships. Um, you've got to be able to pre be prepared now to take more risks to have deeper relationships with people in your soul groups if your twin flame is, you know, perhaps doing other things at this time. I sort of pick up that I, I got told, and I know I've heard people say this before um, in their videos, other twin flame people that I follow, um, they say we're no longer doing any karmic, we, we, karmics are finished, you know. And, but I, I, I do get that message that we are no longer as much as what we were meeting our any karmic partners. So that's, those karmics are kind of starting to fade out of our lives. And we're now preferring to meet our soul group. Um, so what I'm getting shown there is when we meet people from our soul group, we recognize them instantly and we need to get on that level with them. It's really important that you... I'm being shown the namaste. Namaste means I, the God in me sees the God in you. So it's got the God to God relationship. That's what we're aiming for. That's what we're doing right now. We're working on those relationships. Um, I'm getting a side kind of bar. It's as I, I when I get information this way today, it was it came to me kind of like a website. So it was going from one little column of information to another one and clicking on it and stuff so I got when we're when we're in our learning about spirituality or we're opening up and awakening and wanting to know more about spirituality and how to practice spirituality and we come across a plethora of you know YouTube videos thanks for listening guys I really appreciate it by the way for sticking with me and you know lots of books and we read up and we think we know all the stuff and but what we really always need to watch out for on any any spiritual path is for judgment for ourselves um judging ourselves or us judging others or even others judging us 
Um, this is something that really is can get in the way of our practice. And this is where it comes in that we sort of compete with each other in a um, with religions. So again, this is a time of the year where this is traditionally seen as a Christian festival. How other, I think, however other religions do celebrate it in a, um, certain ways. You know, what I'm getting is that religion, the definition of religion is pathway to God. Religion comes about as a way to find God, to reach God, to connect, to understand spirituality and God. What does it all mean? Now, what I hear from Jesus is, and this is where a lot of perhaps the Christian tradition can we can get lost in is that do whatever works do whatever works like you don't like a lot of people can get stuck on into having to read the bible word for word and not really even understanding what they're reading but kind of thinking and it can get so wordy and they're sort of lost in trying to figure out what it actually all means but at the same time have lost the connection to just what I want to be in the relationship with God. So, um, and, and how do we find that? I am going to come on to this towards the end because I'm going to lead us into a meditation. So I will help us to find what, the, as a pathway, this may be an opportunity to see if this works for you, okay? It's a way that I was shown, and it was through the heart, of course. So I, I want to lead us on to that at the end of this video, but I'm just going to just pop in here because it made me think about, when we think about religion, our different religion, religious beliefs, and, and where I work, we have a couple of people at our office, a, a collection, a group of our staff of 40 that are strongly Christian and very, not vocal about it, but say, you know, will say, and um, talk about it and with us. And so I was having a conversation with one of my colleagues and then the, this other person who was a Christian came in and we were talking about our different beliefs. And basically the, the other person who's a Christian said, well, there's no greater power, higher power than God. And I said, and this is where we meet. This is where we meet in the middle. Because if you believe that, it doesn't matter how you get there, what you, how you describe it, we honour the power of God and that being the higher power. So, And that's where we all meet in the middle. Now, um, as we started, as I started to go into the heart, as I was being shown this sort of heart practice from out of getting out of our heads and trying not to overanalyze religion and do things that we're told we're meant to do, but yet we're not doing it with that full intention and full presence and full meaning, um, I felt to tune into our hearts and to find a way to, to melt that, I guess. And as I tuned into my heart, I could feel the walls that I'd put up to protect myself, the sort of mental walls um, sort of melting away. And, and it was really lovely. So then I kind of felt, as we went into the meditation, um, St. Paul came in, and I think he also said his name is Saul. So I did look it up on Wikipedia. I used Wikipedia's definition of him. And I just got a little bit of information about him first so that I could tune into what he was saying. He was actually a persecutor. So he was heading off apparently down somewhere from somewhere um, to persecute a group of, he was a religious kind of persecutor. He was going to punish people for saying certain things. And I don't want to get into what it was, but the, the essence of it is someone saying someone's wrong and punishing them for it. It's their view over your view. And at the moment, and the, he showed me, this is what's going on. Can you see? Everyone's got their polarized views of what's right and what's wrong. And they're all fighting with each other over it. And it's all based in judgment and religious persecution, if you want to call it, or cultural persecution, or one group over another saying, my way is the right way, basically. And that is born from arrogance and ignorance. However, apparently on his way to do this, he was struck blind by the light of God, Jesus, who came to him, 
and provide offered him mercy but, um, to acknowledge his ignorance, basically, and to come into the faith and to believe in God, as because he sort of it shook him out of he he described it later, I believe, in some of the books that he was at his most highest angry kind of religious fever kind of the zeal that he was going off to kill these people in the name of God but it was actually the opposite so you see that that's what we're going through he's telling us we're going through that at the moment there's people on either side shouty shouty at each other my way my way my way's the right way you're wrong blame 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 judge 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 okay um and he did say that there's a whole group of people in the middle that aren't really part of that, but also the media blows it up and they exaggerate everything and there are just extremists on either side that make us all feel like we're we're divided. Um, however, there is one party that may need to back down and he said in the case of himself, he needed to acknowledge that he was wrong and to apologise and have mercy on his soul, basically. So... I do feel that there is a, a group, and I don't want to get it too much into politics at the moment, that there's apologies that are needed and there's acknowledgement of the pain caused that is needed for a large number of our humans on this earth that feel they have been violated and harmed and hurt and have been violated and harmed and hurt. And we, we don't want to do that to each other. We want to obviously love each other and live in peace. So um, this is why... Um, we're now coming into Paul's message of being faith being so important at this time and to believe because a lot of us are at times we lose that faith the faith to remember to call out to however you want to call it God or Jesus or the angels or whoever works whatever works for you okay and just a couple of messages that I copied out from what was written on Google about Paul. So in quotes, he he has said, live by the highest standard, moral standard. May your spirit and soul be kept sound and blameless. All the comings of our Lord, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, so I thought that was quite nice. And to just, I really highlighted and capitalized that word blameless. Because for me, that means I've taken responsibility and I've done what I need to do and I'm not going to be blamed for as long as I do it right. You know, do it the right way, the high moral standard. Do what I think is right. And also that I'm not blaming anyone else either for my... I'm not being a victim. I'm moving on from my past and not getting stuck in that and finding a way to to move out and accept Right, and now um, I'm going to start to wind out this video and I'm just going to leave it with uh, a, a really nice gentle little message from Jesus Christ. Oh, I am sorry, I realised that I didn't talk about my own twin flame situation this week. I, I just want to quickly say that I did talk to my twin flame this week very briefly on the phone. He actually sent me a message, some really, really, really good news regarding his visa which means yeah he can looks like he can stay in New Zealand now hopefully longer without needing to rely on any other sort of sponsors or things like that so he's got more freedom and the other thing so yeah we, we just chatted briefly and I also had a dream about him so you know we again we're connected um you know we we love each other we really do um we're not together as a couple and, and I'm really fine with that and I do try to provide that perspective I and you know sometimes even the twin flame community can get quite hung up on certain ways that we need to do things and you know whatever works is what the message was today so whatever works for you and whatever is your journey is your journey and no one can take that away from you and no one can um, analyze it or you know, tell you what's what, you know what's what. Okay, so I'm going to just tune in now again to a message that was brought to me through the energy of Jesus Christ. 
and he would love it if we could all just find a nice quiet space to just relax and really breathe and be in your body and be calm and just gently breathe again nice and quiet nice and still just slow it down sit down if you need to or just stand still and just be still for a moment and allow yourself this time just even a short time a few times a day even to, to be in silence to be in presence to breathe to take a moment to relax and breathe this is your meditation and as you breathe you connect into your heart remember to live by the call and the beat of your heart breathe again into deep into your heart and ask your heart what does it say does it feel allow your heart to communicate to you to let you know what it needs trust your heart listen to your heart let your heart guide you Allow yourself to be incredibly still and incredibly calm as you allow this beautiful heart energy to filter through your entire body, filling you with light and peace. Be at peace, gentle one, be at peace.